Okay, so I'm here on the NASDAQ website. This is uh, nasdaq.com market activity IPOs. And the reason why I'm showing you this is because I'm doing some research on IPOs. And I thought what I would do is actually show you a little bit behind the scenes on, you know, how I'm looking at attacking the problem. And the problem I'm trying to solve is statistically what happens with IPOs, you know, can I can I gain an edge or can we gain an edge in the market by understanding what typically happens with an IPO? And is that governed by, you know, are there differences based on what day of the week an IPO is launched, its price, its offer amount, um, et cetera, and or, or a combination of all of the above? You know, what what can I use that might give me an edge or an insight as to a good strategy to deploy around trading IPOs? And so, you know, I wanted to show you behind the scenes because actually I valued your comments and feedback on how you might attack the problem or some recommendations you might have uh, as well. But one of the things I'm doing right now is actually running a bot, or at least I'm about to run a bot that I've been testing that will scrape this data. Because what I found is, you know, finding IPO data is actually quite tricky. I'm sure some of you would do a much better job than I've done at finding it. But, you know, NASDAQ has the exact data I want. You know, my plan is to scrape all this data, uh, then to go and get stock price information and figure out, you know, is that ICO, uh, ICO, IPO, <laughs> you can tell I come from crypto, is that IPO been around long enough? Is it still around? Um, what was its price on the first day of launch, on the fifth day, on the first month, on the, you know, first year and today? And what you know, what was its price change versus the market, because the market serves as a benchmark, right? And so taking that into account is can you predict whether or not IPOs will beat the market in any one of those time steps? Because if you can, if on the, on the whole, you can say, yeah, IPOs do this, and that's not priced into the market, which you would imagine it would be, but let's say it's not, um, then you have an edge. And so this is just an itch I want to scratch. I was chatting with my friend John on it. Um, and I said, you know, this is just something I want to do as I have, you know, small pockets of time. Uh, it's an itch that I just have to scratch and I wanted to show it to you here. So here's the NASDAQ website. And if, if you think about this to scrape this data, there's a number of problems. The first thing is, you know, when you go onto the web page, it might not come up now, um, but there's usually a pop up, right? It's a pop up that will say, do you accept cookies? And in fact, let me um, let me open it up in Chrome and see if that pops up for you. Um, it's not popping up in Chrome. I think it's because I've accepted the cookies. But what I can tell you is whenever a bot does it, that pop up always comes up. Here's the pop up. I've just done it in Firefox, right? So this is the first issue that you're going to come across is you have this pop up. So what you need is you need a bot that will automatically accept that pop up. Um, and then, you know, it will also go and scrape only the priced information because I'm not interested in the filings, etc. I'm only interested in priced IPOs. I'm not interested in upcoming IPOs because I'm looking at historical data, etc. You know, how do you get that? Now here on the website, there's some arrows which can scroll, you know, left and right, you can select different date ranges like that. There's also a select date option here. Um, and this is quite fidgety, even for a human, you can see like I'm trying to enter the date uh the day and i can't so you know for example there's a number of ways i could do that i can say try and go zero yeah it's just so fidgety so how do you automate something you know to do that well what you have to do is figure out exactly what you would do so for example if i want this to start from jan 2000 and i'm actually gonna it's so annoying this date selector but if i wanted to start from jan 2000 you know here i would put 01 um you know backspace backspace, 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 2000. And then I would click apply. Um, and then here it's taken me to Jan 2000. And then I'd want to hit the arrow, go next, you know, go to the next one. Um, or in fact, it wouldn't even be the arrow, you would select date, then hit next, then apply, and then you're on Feb, and then, you know, scrape, copy all this data, put it into like a list, save it in an Excel file, you know, and then here, select date, do this. Now imagine doing all of this manually, right? <laughs> you just probably if I had just done this manually, I would have had the data by now, to be honest. Um, but why do that? It's no fun. It's much more fun to build something to scrape the data. And you can see, for example, in this month, there were loads of IPOs, there's loads of data. 
And so I want like 20 years worth of IPO data, which by the way, I will put on the downloads tab at cryptowizards.net once it's done. Um, I'm going to actually publish a report here on the channel once I've done the analysis. It'll be like a high level report, um, but you know, like the PDF and all that stuff, I will put on the site as well. And I will give you here on the channel, the major findings uh, in that analysis too. So don't worry. Um, but so if you if you want the data, you don't want to do all this, don't worry at some point, and I'll announce it on the channel, that data will be there for you. Um, but the, uh, let me talk you through the way I'm actually doing this. So let's close the internet down, um, close the internet, let's close the browsers down. And here I am in Python. So here's something that I've been developing here, you can see I've got a web driver for um, Google Chrome. This is based on the Selenium Python uh, library. So Selenium from what I can see is awesome. And I used it before when scraping Google data, you might, um, news data, you might remember a video on that. For those of you who've been around long enough. And so, you know, so here, what this is doing, what Selenium does is pretty cool. It's not just a scraper, right? It actually can, it's actually testing software. It's actually used to enter in numbers and do things automatically for you. And so I'm actually going to show it to you working. And as it's working, then I'm going to kind of talk through the code and what it's doing. So if I go and hit play over here, um, you'll see that it, it starts up, it opens a browser for me. And now it's going to accept the pop up, it's accepted it, it types in the date. Now it's gone to Jan 2000, and it's scraping 2000. And now it's going to go over to Feb 2000. And there's there's a time delay I put in there, by the way, if you're like, why is it so slow? It's because it has to wait for the browser to actually load, right, you need the browser to load so it can find the components to take the data. So I'm just making it sleep for two seconds between each month. And that's what it's doing. And so here now it's on March. Uh, now it's moving to April in a second. There's April. Um, and so it's just going to keep doing that. Now, this is obviously with this working, this is far quicker than me copying and pasting data. The other reason why it's better to do it this way is because there's no human error, right? You can't copy the wrong number. Um, now you have to be very smart, I would say, or not smart, but you have to think through the logic because you might copy the wrong data, right? You, you might be taking something from a different table without realizing it. So there is logic I've built in. So for those of you who are interested in Python, just continue watching. Um, for those of you who are not who couldn't care less how it's working, you can stop watching the video here. I'm just going to go into the detail of how it works a bit. So so essentially, what it's doing is, you know, it's finding uh, here's Sean McDonough, right? So it's finding the um, where the driver is stored. And I've put some links up here as to where you can download drivers. Um, I've got the year over here. And I've got, you know, how long I wanted to sleep for between intervals, that's two seconds. Uh, the iterations are how many months it needs to go through. So that's 21 years by 12 months. And I wanted to save an iteration every five years. So that's 12 months by five. And the reason for that is things will go wrong, it will break. And then I might need to start it from a different year or something like that. But I don't want it to have to redo like all 20 years or whatever, right? I want intervals saved um, in, in a folder. Um, and then so if we go down here, and I see here, I've got accept cookies. Um, so this is the, the part that actually finds the element with the pop up for, you know, do you accept cookies? And you can see that what's really cool about Selenium is it has this thing called send keys. And I can just say the return key, which is enter, it's the same thing as the enter key. Um, and it will go and you know, enter on accept. So it's doing all of that for me. And this is the code that's doing it. You know, here's the table headings for the table that I create. Um, here's the select date, here's where it's, you know, arrowing left, entering the number one to select the month backspace, 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 entering in the year, um, you know, and so essentially, that's what it's doing. And then down here, it's, uh, you know, every, well, on every iteration that we saved above, it's saving in a data folder, you know, the IPO um, CSV file, and the loops just tells you, you know, how far down it is. So you can see some numbers down here printing, right now it's on month 20 from where it started. And that's all just in the time it took to do this video, right, I'm running low on battery. So I'm going to cut this video short. 
But long story short, that's what it's doing. Um, you know, it should give me a ton of data. And the next step is I'm going to bring in some price data. I don't know when the next video will be that I make on, you know, IPOs and the analysis that I'm doing on them. Um, but I thought this would be quite fun for you. So again, my battery's running low. I better go plug it in. But I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.